Cambridge IGCSE Biology Major 2020 Paper 43 Question 1 State three uses of energy in the human body I think this question was also in paper 41 and 42 which just shows how important this is I hope you guys already know the answer for this There are so many possible answers like protein synthesis, growth, movement, sensitivity, cell division, active transport, nerve impulses and so on. Part B, figure 1.1 shows part of the digestive system of a human. Complete table 1.1, one row has been done for you. We have the function, name of structure, and letter from figure 1.1. The one that pushes foot to the stomach is esophagus. It's A. Then, the assimilation of amino acids to produce plasma proteins, and so on, which means they require you to know all the functions and the names of the structures of the digestive system. Okay, the assimilation of amino acids, it's done by the liver. And from the diagram, the liver is this, K. It looks like this. Storage of bile. Bile is stored by gallbladder. And gallbladder is here, letter L. Secretion of insulin. Insulin is secreted by pancreas, which is C. It looks like a leaf. Absorption of fatty acids and glycerol. It is done by the small intestine. Well, small intestine is pointed by two alphabets, the first one H and D. It's the path over here. You just need to write either H or D. Secretion of pepsin. It's secreted by the stomach. And the alphabet for stomach is B. I hope you guys know how to identify the structures inside the digestive system. Digestion of starch. Starch is digested in the small intestine. So again, you either write H or D. Part C. Describe the role of the liver in the recovery from oxygen death after strenuous exercise. First of all, you need to state what happens when there is an oxygen death. Due to oxygen death, lactic acid will be produced in muscles. And they are not just randomly produced. They are the product of anaerobic respiration. Then we can talk about what the liver does about this. So the liver absorbs lactic acid from the blood. Take note that although lactic acid is first produced in muscles, they will still be in blood. Then after absorbing the lactic acid, your body will try to get rid of it. So there will be an aerobic respiration of lactic acid. Then as a result, carbon dioxide and water will be produced. These are just products of aerobic respiration. Part D. Alcohol is a drug. Define the term drug. This is another important definition that you need to memorize. Drug is any substance taken into the body that modifies the chemical reactions in the body. Part E. State two immediate effects of excessive alcohol on the body. What happens when you suddenly drink lots of alcohol in a short period of time? Alcohol is known as the depressant, which means it can immediately calm you down. Also, it's going to lengthen the reaction time. So even if you get hit by something, you'll react much slower to that compared to when you're sober. Also, of course, it reduces self-control. You tend to become more reckless. You just need to write two of these. Stay two long-term effects of excessive alcohol on the body. There are going to be negative effects. Firstly, the most common one, you can get addicted to alcohol and it's going to ruin your life. There will be liver damage and get infections or diseases in your liver. Part of pregnant women are advised not to drink alcohol as it may have harmful effects on the fetus. Outline this harmful effects. It's a common knowledge that pregnant women should not drink alcohol. 
it's because there's a high risk of miscarriage and premature birth. Premature birth means the baby being born a few months earlier than expected, and also the baby can have a low birth weight, which is not exactly healthy. And yeah, the mother can get addicted to alcohol, making the whole thing worse. Stay two harmful substances other than alcohol that can cross the placenta. Yes, alcohol can cross the placenta, so that's why pregnant women should not drink alcohol. Another thing that can cross the placenta to the baby is nicotine, so that's why pregnant women are not supposed to smoke. And also, all kinds of pathogens and virus can pass through the placenta. So, for example, like HIV, it can also be transmitted to the baby. Then you can write stuff like drugs or pesticides, that mercury and all that. Even if you just need to write two answers when you're studying, try to learn all the answers because it can also come out in paper two, and you may have to choose whether the substance can cross the placenta or not. Question two, part A. Figure two point one shows the human population of a country between nineteen ten and twenty twenty. The number of people in million is increasing gradually. Calculate the percentage increase in the population of the country between nineteen forty and twenty twenty. The population in nineteen forty was twenty million. Then the population in twenty twenty was hundred and thirty six million. To find the percentage increase, you need to first find the increase in the population and divide it by the initial population, then multiply it by one hundred. So it's one hundred thirty-six minus twenty over twenty times one hundred, and you get five hundred eighty percent. Describe the factors that could cause the change in the population size between 1940 and 2020, shown in Figure 2.1. Why did the population size increase over the years? It's because there was an increase in birth rate and decrease in death rate thanks to the developed healthcare system, and overall there was increased food supply, which led to reduced poverty and starvation. And since there is a V P in the mark scheme, you can just write anything that really makes sense on why the population size increased. For example, like better housing, development of vaccination, and improved sanitation make perfect sense. Part B. Some countries have invested in biofuels such as ethanol, biomass, and biodiesel. Describe how ethanol can be made by microorganisms. How is ethanol made? It is made by yeast using anaerobic respiration. This is the chemical equation. So yeast goes through anaerobic respiration of glucose and produces ethanol. Some countries use large areas of land to grow maize plants. This crop plant can be used to produce biofuels. Discuss the negative impact on the environment of growing large-scale monocultures of crop plants such as maize. This is a four-mark question, but they have more than ten points that you can write as your answer. So no worries. Okay. So firstly, the large areas before you start growing your crops, they're gonna cut down all the trees and plants and. The other unrelated stuff in the land, so this is going to lead to deforestation. Then the animals and other organisms that live there will lose their habitat, and they'll have to either move or may not survive in the area anymore. And this is going to lead to the disruption of food chains. Then, since it's monoculture, you're just gonna have one type of plant. Then there will be loss of biodiversity. This can be very dangerous because let's say there is one disease that can infect the maize crops. If this disease starts spreading throughout the crops, it's gonna affect all the crops in the land because they're just all the same types of plants. Also, same thing for pests. If there's just one type of pest that can immediately kill all of the maize plants, the whole field will be wiped out. So it's pretty risky. 
and this same type of plant will take in the same type of nutrients from the ground so there will be disrupted nutrient cycling furthermore if you keep on planting the crops in the same area the water that the soil initially held will all be gone by the crops absorbing them so there can be desertification And of course, to grow better crops, the farmers are going to put lots of herbicides and pesticides and all those chemicals to remove unnecessary organisms and species. So of course, it's bad for the environment. Lastly, when you're growing crops, it's a must to use fertilizers. And these fertilizers will be wiped away and may enter the rivers or the streams nearby. This is going to pollute the river. Question 3. The American writer Ernest Hemingway lives on the island of Key West in Florida, USA in the 1930s. During this time, he was given a mail kit by a sea captain. The cat had more toes than usual. This inherited condition is called polydactyly. The allele for polydactyly is dominant. Part A. Define the term inheritance. Definition. It's the transmission of genetic information from generation to generation. I've seen hundreds of questions, okay, maybe not hundreds, but lots of questions asking for the definition of inheritance, so you must remember this. Part B, figure 3.1 is a part of a pedigree diagram for Hemingway's cats. Oh yeah, we have to keep in mind that polydactyly is dominant. So we have the female cat with normal number of toes, male cat with normal number of toes, then the shaded ones are the ones with polydactyly. State the genotypes of cats 5, 6, and 14 in the pedigree diagram in figure 3.1. Use the letters big T and small t. Let's first look at cat 5. It's this one. It's a female cat with polydactyly. So it should at least have one big T. It can be homozygous dominant with two big T's or heterozygous with one big T and one small T. While looking at its parents, which are cats 1 and 2, you can see that cat 2 was a female cat with normal number of toes. As a result, cat 5 should be a heterozygous carrying one allele with normal number of toes since its mother carries alleles for normal number of toes. Then for cat 6, it's a male cat with normal number of toes. Since having polydactyly is a dominant feature, if it's just normal number of toes, it should be heterozygous recessive. Cat 14 is here. It's a female cat with polydactyly. Both of its parents have polydactyly, so each of them should carry at least one big T. But the thing is, you don't know if they are homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So since it cannot be found, the parents of cat 8 are not even shown. So for cat 14, its genotype can be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Explain why none of the offspring of cats 3 and 4 have inherited polydactyly. Use the information in figure 3.1 in your answer. The offsprings of cats 3 and 4, yeah, they're all just female and male cats with normal number of toes. That is because cats 3 and 4 are actually homozygous recessive. That should be the only answer if they carried at least one big T or one allele with polydactyly then one of their offspring should have polydactyly but they don't so the final answer is that cats 3 and 4 are homozygous recessive or just do not have the allele for polydactyly part c scientists published the results of an investigation into the dna of cats with and without polydactyly they compared the base sequence from a particular region of DNA that controls the development of the limbs. 
Table 3.1 shows the base sequences cats without polydactyly, then cats with polydactyly, then cats with polydactyly from Oregon and Missouri in the USA, and with polydactyly from the UK. Describe how the base sequences of the cats with polydactyly differ from the base sequence of cats without polydactyly. This question may look confusing like it has a table and random information, but just look at the difference between the base sequence. If you look at this column, you'll see that the cat without polydactyly has a base sequence of A, G, A. However, for those with polydactyly, their base sequences are different. It's G, G, A. And this last cat has a base sequence of A, G, T. So all you need to do is just mention about the difference in the base sequence. Cats with normal number of toes have A, G, A for bases 7, 8, and 9. But cats with polydactyly have GGA or AGT as their base sequence. And that's it. State the name of the process by which base sequences in DNA are changed. It's called mutation. The base sequences in Table 3.1 provide evidence that indicates which country the male cat given to Hemingway in the 1930s came from. Suggest which country this cat came from and give a reason for your choice. Hemingway's cats with polydactyly had GGA as its base sequence for bases 7, 8, and 9. Then cats with polydactyly from the USA had the base sequence, the same base sequence, GGA. So it's very easy. It's obvious that it came from Oregon and Missouri in the USA. Part D, figure 3.2 shows part of a DNA molecule from a chromosome of a cat. Complete figure 3.2 by writing the letters for the base sequence of the other strand for the DNA molecule. This is a framework question. You know that A bonds with T and G bonds with C. So T, then A, T, T, A, C, G, C, A, C. Part E. Explain why polydactyly is an example of discontinuous variation. There are two features which tell you that a variation is discontinuous instead of a continuous variation. One is that it has a distinct phenotype. So for polydactyly, it had more number of toes than the normal cats. So it's pretty obvious. Other example of discontinuous variation include your blood group, it doesn't change over time and it's fixed. So there's another feature that shows that it's a discontinuous variation. It's that the phenotypes are not on a continuous scale. For example, height is a continuous variation and it can change over time and it's on a continuous scale like from 0 centimeters to 2 meters. It's continuous. But for this continuous variation like polydactyly, they are either 5 toes or 6 toes or 7 toes. It's fixed. There are no 5.5 toes and 6.2 toes and so on. I'll do the rest of the paper in my next video. If you want to motivate me, like and comment on my video. They really make my day. Subscribe to get ready for your IGCSE exams as I'll be uploading more past papers in the future. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye.